By this moment, you've probably seen that everything you're looking for actually lines up well with NA10. But the next problem everyone runs into is choosing how to self-host it. Not because any option is bad, but because choosing the wrong one can lead to days of debugging, workflows breaking from missed updates, and paying for way more computing power than you actually need. After trying everything out there, these are the five options that make running NA10 easy and safe. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through each one of those options, show you where they perform good or bad, and help you choose the one that fits your exact needs so you don't waste time or money. To make this as simple as possible, I've broken all the self-hosting options into three clear categories based on what you actually need. Category one gives you the best return on your investment and the easiest way to run NA10. Great if you want the benefits without any of the technical setup. Category two covers the platforms that give you a bit more manual control over how you self-host. These options can cost less, and they're perfect if you want more flexibility without diving into full backend management. And category three is where you get full server control. This is for people who like getting their hands dirty, want to manage every part themselves, and don't mind a more technical setup. This way, you can immediately figure out which group fits you. And at the end of the video, I'll walk through the pros and cons of each category, along with the one I'd personally choose. So let's jump into category one, the highest return on investment way to set up NA10. Now for this first category, we're gonna use a tool called Hostinger. Hostinger is the best way to get all the benefits of self-hosting NA10 without dealing with any of the complicated server setup. They run everything on reliable cloud VPS machines, they handle the configuration, and they've built a one-click NA10 setup that removes almost all the technical steps people normally struggle with. So let me show you exactly how this works from start to finish. First, head over to Hostinger. You'll find the link in the description below. Scroll down, and for this demo, we're going to pick the KVM2 plan. This one gives you two CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, and eight terabytes of bandwidth, which is more than enough for what NA10 requires. Click the plan you want to go for. I usually recommend choosing either the one-year or two-year option because it gives you the best price per month, but pick whatever makes sense for you. Scroll down and select your server location. Choose the one that's closest to where you are, or closest to where your automations will run. Right under that, you'll see the operating system selection. Here, you can either select the standard NA10 template or one of the versions that comes with ready-made workflows. Both work the same. The only difference is that the preloaded ones already have a few workflows you can jump into immediately. Either option is fine, then click continue, fill in your payment details and complete the checkout. Once you've done that, Hostinger will start setting up your VPS. It usually takes about a minute or two. When the setup is done, you'll be taken to your main dashboard and here you'll see a button called Manage App. Click that, and right away, you're inside your self-hosted NA10 instance. There are no Docker commands, database setup, or any server configuration whatsoever. It's already running. You can start building workflows immediately, and you now have a private automation server running 24-7, owned by you, with no execution limits, and no restrictions whatsoever. The entire setup took us less than two minutes, and the pricing for what you get is honestly kind of ridiculous. The KVM2 plan is around $10 a month if you pay month to month, and to get the equivalent performance on the NA10 cloud, you would easily pay five times more. And the nice thing is you control the power. If you ever need more RAM or more CPU, you just upgrade your VPS, you're never forced into higher priced automation plans. If this setup feels a little too basic and you prefer more control or more ways to adjust the technical side, there's another path you can go with. Then let's jump into category two, where the platforms handle most of the DevOps work, but still give you room to customize. For this category, we have two tools that work almost the same way. The first one is Railway, and the second one is Render. Both of these platforms let you deploy an A10 without touching any code, and they handle it in slightly different ways. Railway is a bit more template-based and usage-priced, and Render gives you fixed server sizes. Neither of them is better or worse in general. It really just depends on what you want. Let's begin with Railway. First, you want to create an account on Railway. If you don't have one yet, they'll ask you to sign up and go through a quick onboarding. You'll see a few options. Here you want to click Template. If you don't see an A10 immediately in the list, just type NA10 into the search bar. Choose the template called NA10 with workers. This is the most complete setup, and it includes everything you need. The main NA10 service, a worker service, Redis, and Postgres. Railway now begins spinning up all the components. Normally, the entire process takes under a minute. Once everything is done, you'll want to click on the primary NA10 service. A side panel will open up with a URL. Click that URL, and it opens your self-hosted version of NA10 in a new tab. From here, create your admin account, finish the onboarding, and you get free features that stay active long-term, and then you're ready to use it. You can now start building out your workflows just like you would on any other NA10 instance. In terms of pricing, Railway does have a plan that starts at around $5 a month, 
but I honestly wouldn't recommend going with that for anything beyond basic testing. If you actually plan to use this for real workflows, I'd recommend going for the pro plan at around $20 a month. But again, that depends on what you prefer and how heavy your usage is. Now let's go ahead and check out Render. For the Render setup, you start by going to their website and creating an account there as well. Once you're logged in, you want to click on new web service and then on existing image. Render works a bit differently from Railway. Instead of choosing a template, you'll be using a Docker image. So open up a new tab and search for NA10 Docker image. Go to the official Docker Hub page, scroll down until you see the image URL and copy that URL exactly as it's shown. Now go back to Render and paste that link into the image URL field. Click connect and Render will automatically detect the container for you. Choose the region that's closest to you, then Render will ask you to choose a plan. You can select the free one if you just want to test things, but for actual use, I'd normally recommend going with one of the paid tiers, the starter or a higher plan, depending on how heavy your workflows are and how consistent you want the performance to be. Once you've picked a plan, Render will pull the Docker image and set up the server automatically. This usually takes one or two minutes. Then once that is done, click the URL at the top of the page. This opens up your NA10 instance, same idea as with Railway. From here, again, you create your account, go through onboarding, and everything just works out of the box. You don't need to do any extra configuration to start building workflows. So that is category number two. This one's a little more on the technical side than Hostinger, but still easy enough to handle. I go with Railway if you want usage pricing and quick templates, and Render if you want fixed sizes and stable performance. If you want to go even further with full server access, customization, and the ability to manage every single part of your NA10 environment, you'll want to stick around for category number three. Two of the tools we're going to take a look at in category number three are Sliplane and DigitalOcean. Sliplane gives you a dedicated setup made for running dockerized apps, while DigitalOcean gives you a full VPS where you control every part of the machine. Sliplane is a bit easier and more guided, and DigitalOcean is the most customizable option. Let's begin with the first one, which is Sliplane. First, head over to the Sliplane website and log in using your GitHub account. Once you're inside, start by creating a new project and name it something like NA10. Click into the project and select Deploy Service. Before the service can run, Sliplane will ask you to create a server. If it's your first time signing up, Sliplane gives you a temporary demo server, but it gets deleted after two days, so for anything real, you can attach a payment method and create a paid server. But for now, we'll just use this default server. And there you'll immediately see an NA10 preset. Then click the preset and the rest is handled by Sliplane, including the official NA10 image. You'll see the image URL at the top. You can change it if you want a specific version, but for this video, we'll leave everything exactly as it is. Click deploy and Sliplane will pull the image and start the container. Once the deployment is ready, click the domain Sliplane gives you. Create your admin account, complete onboarding, and you're inside. One more thing worth mentioning. In the registry configuration section, you'll see the image set to the latest tag. If you ever want to update NA10, all you need to do is click redeploy, and Sliplane will check Docker Hub for a newer version and automatically update your installation. With that being said, let's move over to DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is a VPS provider, meaning you get a clean virtual machine and full control over everything on it. This is ideal for people who want maximum flexibility and aren't afraid of a slightly more complex setup. Start by going to the DigitalOcean website, create an account from there, go to the marketplace section, search for NA10, and you'll find the official one-click installer. Click create NA10 droplet. Select the region closest to you, choose your server size, confirm the Ubuntu version, and create your root password. Once everything looks good, click create droplet. DigitalOcean will now start provisioning the server, which usually takes a couple of minutes, but DigitalOcean does require one extra step. You can't simply open the new IP address directly like you can with Sliplane or Railway. You need to connect a domain name, add an A record inside your DNS provider, and point it to the IP address of your droplet. Give it a minute or two to propagate. Once that's done, go back to your DigitalOcean dashboard and click console. This opens a remote terminal into your server. Press enter, put in your domain name, confirm your email, and let DigitalOcean run the setup. When the setup completes, create your admin account as usual, and that's it. You're all set and ready to run DigitalOcean with NA10. Now in terms of pricing, Sliplane's base plan comes in at nine euros per month, and it runs NA10 comfortably right out of the box. DigitalOcean can be cheaper or more expensive, depending on the droplet you choose. Their smallest plan starts at around $4 per month, but for stable long-term use, most people go with something in the $12 range. Both options give you more customization and flexibility than the earlier ones. Each category is different and knowing how they work 
helps you pick the one that fits you best. Now let's go through the pros and cons of each option so you can easily figure out which one works best for you. Let's start with the most advanced category, category number three. This category gives you the highest amount of control. The pros here are pretty straightforward. You get full server access, full customization, the ability to choose your own infrastructure, and the freedom to edit every single part of your NA10 environment. This approach scales with you easily, but the cons are also very real. You'll be responsible for things like updates, security, backups, domains, and keeping the server in good shape. And if something breaks, you're the one fixing it. It's powerful, but definitely requires more involvement. Now, category number two is a little different. Here you get a lot of the benefits of self-hosting without needing to actually manage a traditional server. The pros are that it's easy to get running and you still get more control than a basic one-click VPS gives you. The cons are mainly pricing and limitations, so it's a middle ground option for people who want more control without having to manage the whole infrastructure. Now, category number one, which is Hostinger, is a totally different approach. The pros here are simplicity, speed, cost and stability. You get a dedicated environment, you get predictable monthly pricing, and you get a one-click installation that eliminates pretty much all of the technical problems that normally come with self-hosting NA10. It's fast, beginner-friendly, and still powerful enough for 99% of the use cases. And you still get unlimited executions, full data privacy, and the ability to scale your server if you ever need to. The cons are mainly that you don't have quite as much configuration freedom as running everything manually. But for most users, that works out well because it takes away most of the things that normally lead to issues. So with all of that laid out, here is the simple conclusion. Every category gets the job done. It just depends on what you need. If you're someone who wants absolute control and you enjoy the technical side of things, then category three is probably where you'll land. If you want a little more control without the maintenance, a category two is gonna feel really nice. If you're someone who wants an A10 self-hosted, running 24 seven without the stress, without the complex DevOps, and without the unpredictable pricing, then category number one ends up being the most practical choice. And that's exactly why I go with this option myself. Now you know the best ways to self-host NA10 and exactly which option fits your needs. If you want full control, unlimited executions, your own private NA10, and a setup that's done in under two minutes, then you absolutely need Hostinger. Go ahead and sign up for Hostinger using the link down in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.